Hi everyone, this is Noah Sandler from MTGO Academy, and today I'm excited to bring you my Eldritch Moon Top 4 Commons for Limited Review. So, we're going to get started with White, and number 4, Desperate Sentry. 2 and a White, it's a 1-2 human. When it dies, put a 3-2 colorless Eldrazi Horror creature token on the battlefield. And it has Delirium, and it gets plus 3 plus 0. So one way to look at this card is it's a 3-2 that also gives you an extra chump. And 3-2 for 3 mana is not great, but with some upside it can actually be a decent card. And getting an extra creature out of the deal is pretty nice. Um, if you are a really aggressive deck, it's going to be slow because it, it just attacks for 1, your opponent can just take it every turn. Um, but if you're defensive, if you're looking for value, then it's actually better that you get the 1-2 first and you get the 3-2 later. But that all changes with Delirium, where it starts as a 4-2 and then becomes a 3-2. And that means that it can pretty easily trade twice, so this card can give you a 2-for-1. And on top of that, there's Emerge in this set that allows you to sacrifice creatures to cast a large creature, usually with a, uh, an as this is cast effect, and you want three and four mana creatures with coming to play abilities that allow you to emerge these creatures without losing too much value. And Desperate Sentry is amazing for that. So you pay three mana, turn three, turn four, you put out an emerge creature, and you just get a 3-2 out of the deal. So even if your opponent has removal for the emerge card, you still don't feel like you lost too much. Now the emerge cards are in green, blue, and black, so there aren't any white emerge cards, but white will pair well with any of those colors, you're going to want the sentry. And it's going to be one of the best commons for white if you are playing emerge cards. Number three is Fiend Binder. Three and a white, three two human, when it attacks, tap target creature defending player controls. So this is like a weaker version of Goblin Heel Cutter, which was one of the best commons um, in Fate Reforged. Uh, but this card doesn't have the dash effect that Heel Cutter had, but Heel Cutter was still very good just casting it. And this card will be too. You need to be aggressive. If you're a really controlling deck, you're just not going to be interested in this card because it doesn't block well. Four mana for three two is not very good. Uh, but if you are interested in attacking, then taking out your opponent's best blocker each turn puts a lot of pressure on your opponent to sit back and play defense. So uh, normally when you're racing, maybe your opponent just leaves one creature back uh, while they're attacking you with flyers, they have a big wall. But with the binder out, you actually need to leave two creatures back. If you have a removal spell, they would need to leave three back. So it just puts a lot of pressure on your opponent. Even if they have some creatures out so that if you attacked they could trade with the binder, it still forces them to play a bit of defense. And if they just have one creature out, then you're going to end the game quickly because they're not going to be able to block. Number two is Choking Restraints. Two and a white, aura, enchanted creature can't attack or block. You can pay three and two white, sacrifice it to exile enchanted creature. So Choking Restraints is a pacifism for one extra mana, which is certainly fine, it is already very good by itself. And it also allows you to exile the creature when you, you know, pay five mana, and that means that it potentially could deal with utility creatures uh, that pacifisms usually have no way of dealing with, uh, though you are paying eight mana to do so, uh, so, you know, killing your opponent's, um, you know, two mana or three mana utility creature for eight mana, that's not a very good deal, but it's nice to have that ability on a card that's already quite good. But the reason why this isn't the best white common, and why it's a little bit weaker in this format, is because of Emerge. So uh, green, blue, and black decks are going to be playing Emerge cards, and that allows them to sacrifice a creature to bring out a larger creature with a uh, you know, good, you know, as you're casting it, effect. So if you use Choking Restraints early, your opponent might just sacrifice a creature and big out, uh, bring out a bigger threat. Meaning to play this card effectively, you might just want to hold it uh, against decks with blue, green, or black, and wait for your opponent to actually play the emerged creature first, and then use restraints on that. So it's still very good, but I feel like it drops a little bit because of emerge in this format. And the number one white common is Sigardian Priest. 
one and a white, one two human, and pay one, tap it, tap target non-human creature. So this is effectively a master decoy, a creature that can cheaply tap any creature your, your opponent controls. Uh, sometimes you can tap on your opponent's turn and then tap on your turn to remove two creatures uh, from blocking. Uh, and it hits non-human creatures, but human creatures only make up a small percentage of the cards in the set. And the biggest creatures are the Eldrazi uh, that emerge, which this takes care of, and werewolves that are really expensive to cast and to flip. And just having a priest counters one of those cards, and that's really amazing. And unlike Choking Restraints, Priest can be used early, but you can also use it later on for your opponent's big creatures, so I feel like it actually is just the better card. Next up, we have the blue commons, and I'm going to have to break my rules already, uh, because blue is very deep, and interestingly has five commons that, in my opinion, are all about equal. I have them all rated at a B-. And I feel that any one of these fives could actually be the best, the best blue common for your particular deck. And you know, if it's first pick, first pack, I tried to order them in that way to reflect that. Um, so right now I have number five as drag under. It's two and a blue, sorcery, return target creature to its owner's hand, and draw a card. So this is reminiscent of the card Repulse, which was the same card, but an instant. And Repulse was amazing. Uh, they have not made a card like this uh, that has been this close to Repulse. So this is a card that we should really give a lot of consideration to. Um, being instant speed for Repulse was amazing, because your opponent can play a combat trick, you can Repulse in response, they can try to remove your creature, you Repulse, and you're drawing a card, so you're staying even or up on card advantage. So this card is a good deal worse. But in this particular format, we got to look at how good is Bounce, and I think Bounce is very good. There's the Emerge creatures that require sacrificing a creature to get out. Uh, they do have a uh, you know, come-into-play effect, basically, um, which reduces the value of bouncing it a little bit, but sometimes they won't be able to replay it immediately, or they have to sacrifice a more high-value creature to do so, and you are drawing a card. It gives you some tempo, so that's very nice. Uh, it's amazing against werewolves that your opponent has to spend a lot of mana to cast and to transform, giving you a huge tempo swing there. And there are some good auras, so you can get two for ones that way. And on top of that, the red blue spells deck seems like it got a lot better in this uh, with um, you know, with Eldritch Moon coming out. So uh, yeah, this is a spell that replaces itself, which enables you to draw more spells. So this is a good card to sort of go off with. And also great in blue-white flyers, you just put some flyers out, play cards like Drag Under to out-tempo your opponent, keep getting damage in, keep drawing cards. So yeah, this card could very well be the best blue common, but there's four other cards that are also really strong. So we're going to go to number four, and that is Tattered Haunter. One in a blue, two, one flying spirit, and it can only block creatures with flying. So this is a welcome turn which has always been a good common. The more aggressive you can make your deck, the better. Uh, it's something that you could cut in more controlling decks and maybe side in against other decks with flyers to be able to block. But this card just puts a lot of pressure on your opponent early and just keeps attacking for two every turn. And your opponent will have to use removal spell on it eventually. So in a blue-white flyers deck or generally aggressive deck, this card could very well be the best blue common. And number three is Exultant Cultist. Two and a blue, it's two two human. When it dies, draw a card. So this is just a very solid card by itself. Um, it can trade with a lot of two and three drops and you're up a card. Uh, so it's similar to Byway Courier, which was a very good common from Shadows. You don't have to spend the mana to sacrifice a clue. It does have one less power. Uh, but what makes it really great is Emerge, uh, which it is a blue card, Emerges in blue. So this is a three drop that you can turn into a large creature while drawing a card. So even if your opponent deals with the Emerge creature, you're not down a card. And that makes this a pretty key enabler uh, for blue. So uh, if you already have some Emerge creatures, this is probably going to be the best blue common for you. But I think for starters, you probably want to start taking the actual emerge creatures. 
and that leads us to number two, Wretched Griff. It's seven mana for three, four, flying Eldrazi Hippogriff with a merge five and a blue, and when you cast it, draw a card. So if we look at this for just the seven mana cost, uh, it's overcosted. If you paid five mana for this effect, it would be quite good. For six mana, it would be a little bit overcosted, but still okay. And then seven mana, it's overcosted. But still, if you draw this in the late game and you have seven mana, uh, yeah, playing a 3-4 flyer and drawing a card is going to be quite good. But usually you're going to be casting this earlier in the game. So on turn four or five, you're going to sacrifice a two or a three drop. You're going to get the 3-4 flyer. You're going to draw a card. And maybe, if you're lucky, the creature that you sacrifice is also going to give you an effect. Uh, and you know that's going to be an archetype by itself. And the Griff is going to be a really key card in that archetype. But I think it's also just good in any blue deck. Uh, if you have some number of creatures that you don't care too much about, even if you don't have really great combos with it, sacrificing a creature, you get the card back, you get to get the 3-4 flyer out on turn 4 or 5, and that's just really strong. It gives you a good board presence, and it's a creature that your opponent's going to have to deal with while replacing itself. And the number one blue common is Ingenious Scab. 2 and a blue, 2-3 zombie with prowess, and you can spend a blue to give it plus 1, minus 1 until on a turn. And again, I think all these cards are relatively equivalent. It's going to depend on the deck you're in. And obviously, if you're in a spells-based deck, this is going to be the card that you're going to want. As it's got great stats, can deal a lot of damage uh, really early in the game, um, while also being a decent defensive creature as well. Um, but let's look at it for just your average blue deck. If you're not really focus on spells. I mean, you are going to have some, so sometimes you're going to be able to pump this, and you're going to have the threat of activation, so if you leave this up and your opponent wants to attack into you, and you've got mana up, uh, they do have to worry about dealing with a 3-4, or a 4-3, or a 5-2, uh, yeah, whatever you'd like to make it. But the card is also just well costed, it, it attacks well on turn 4, you can pump it twice, attack for 4 damage, so it provides a pretty good clock on its own. Uh, so yeah, just a very solid card, one you're going to play in any blue deck, uh, but it's also particularly good in the spells deck. So right now I have this as the number one blue common. Now moving on to black. Uh, black is a lot shallower, um, and I had some difficulty coming up with the fourth best common, uh, and I'm going to make it Gavany Unhollowed. It's three and a black, 2-4 zombie, whenever another creature you control dies, put a plus one plus one counter on it. So by itself, for a 4 drop, being a 2-4, that's not good. Um, there's the 2-4 that when it dies, your opponent discards a card from Shadows, uh, the like Rod and Heart Ghoul, I think, and that card wasn't that good. Um, so, you know, we, this card needs to get a lot of value out of its ability, and I think it can. Um, once one of your creatures dies, it becomes a 3-5, and spending 4 mana for a 3-5 is quite good. Uh, and, and just having the 2-4 by itself gives you a pretty good blocker the turn that you play it. So this card can buy you time, and the more time you have, the more likely that your creatures are going to die. Um, I don't think there are any really crazy combos with this card uh, to make it really huge. I think it's just a good value card. So you're spending 4 mana, and you're hoping to get a 3-5 or a 4-6. Um, and once it becomes 4-6, as the game goes on, it can still get bigger, and yeah, you only paid 4 mana for that card. So I think this card is a bit of a sleeper, and I'm going to have it at number 4. At number 3, we have Certain Death. 5 and a black sorcery, destroy target creature, its controller loses 2 life, and you gain 2 life. So this is what removal costs these days. Um, Wizards has been slowly increasing the cost over time and trying to see the limits of what people are willing to pay to have removal still be good but not be so cheap that you can uh, you know, out-tempo somebody while playing a removal spell. So for this one, you have to spend your whole turn to cast it, but it does kill whatever creature you want and the drain of two is pretty nice. It's not worth an extra card, um, yeah, maybe it's worth an extra mana but uh, really you're playing this just to kill something and uh, I think it's actually pretty good at that. I think this is a good format for this effect with Emerge, Giant Eldrazi's, the big werewolves. There are some creatures that you really want to deal with and spending six mana to kill them is worth it. 
This card works well in aggressive decks as a curve topper. I think you'd even run two. Um, so you just remove your opponent's biggest blocker, they lose two life, and you make a big attack. Uh, and it's also fine in control decks that need to have ways to deal with really big threats. Um, so yeah, I just think it's a, a solid card in this format, even though it's pretty expensive. Number two is Olivia's Dragoon. One and a black, two two vampire. Discard a card, it gets flying until on a turn. So in your average black deck, this card's going to be fine. It's a two drop with a bit of upside, so that's good. Um, it has a vampire subtype, so you might get some value out of that. Uh, but what's really important about this card is that it's a free discard outlet at common, and there aren't that many of those anymore. So if you're trying to build a Madness deck, and there are a lot of Madness cards in this new set, um, this is the card you're going to need to go to uh, to be able to enable uh, you know, the broken Madness starts. So if you want to you know, play one of your broken 3 mana Madness cards, like Incorrigible Use, on turn 3, then you're going to need a card like Dragoon. So it's just such a high pick for the Madness deck that uh, even though it's just going to be okay in non-Madness decks, uh, it's just something that you really need the Madness deck, so you got to pick it highly. And our number one black common is Boon of Emrakul. Two and a black aura, enchanted creature gets plus three, minus three. So this card is not insane. It's three mana, you get to kill a three toughness creature. Uh, you know, so it's good. You do it at sorcery speed. Um, you're not you get to get a two for one off this card. It's just a solid one for one for getting rid of solid creatures. Uh, and this is a format with some very large creatures, and this doesn't touch them. So, yeah, I mean, the card's not amazing. Uh, one good thing about it is it is an enchantment, and there are some good delirium cards in this set, so this lets you get an enchantment into the graveyard pretty easily. It's also splashable, so I don't expect these to go very late. Um, I think in the Madness deck, you're going to want to just take the Olivia's Dragoon over it, but in any other black deck, yeah, it's one for one removal, costs three mana, so good card. And lastly, um, in white, there is the 3-2. It's Ironclad something that returns an aura or equipment to your hand from your graveyard. That's going to be a really nice combo with this card. So you can get back your boon, replay it. Um, so if you're black-white, uh, boon will go up, and that 3-2, which certainly didn't make my list, will become a pretty good card. Now on to red. Red is a very deep color at commons in this set, and it also has some very powerful commons, too. So red's in a really good place here. Uh, we're going to start with Vilden Pack Outcast. It's four and a red of four four Werewolf Horror with Trample. You can spend a red mana to give it plus one minus one until on the turn, and you can spend five and two red to transform it into Drone Pack Kindred, a five seven Eldrazi Werewolf with Trample, and you can spend one mana to give it plus one plus O oh until on the turn. So we'll start with the first side. 4-4 four, four, Trample for 5 that you can pump plus 1, minus 1 as much as you want. Um, that's pretty solid. Uh, you threaten to attack for maybe 7 damage, so your opponent can't really ignore this card. Uh, they also can't chump it uh, since it will trample over, so they're going to have to trade a pretty good creature or a good removal spell to remove this card. Uh, it also has the Werewolf type, so there's some bonuses from that. So already it's a pretty solid card, one you'd be reasonably happy to play in a red deck. But it transforms for 7. It transforms into a 5-7 trample that you can pump for one colorless mana. And that is incredible. Uh, it is such a good card when it's transformed. If you transform it, you spend 7 mana. So you're probably going to have 7 mana on the next turn. That means that this attacks for 12 trample as a 12-7 creature with trample. I don't know how your opponent deals with that. They need a hard removal for it right away, or they're dead. Uh, they can stack three or four creatures on it, but you're, you know, you're smashing through all of them, maybe still getting some damage over. So uh, you know, the flip card is absolutely insane. So you put that together, I mean, it's already very solid, and then in the late game, you just win if your opponent doesn't have an answer to it. Um, makes this a really strong card. And the only reason that it's not higher on the list is because it is 5 mana, and also to pay the 7 to transform it, it's a huge mana sink, 
So this isn't a card that you want three of. Uh, you'd want to max out on two. You only want to play so many five drops. So I feel like you don't actually pick this card too high, but if you do have one of them, I think you're really happy. At number three, we have a card that is a lot less exciting, but I think is going to be a higher pick for consistency. It's Brazen Wolves. It's two and a red, a two, three wolf. When it attacks, it gets plus two, plus oh until end of turn. Now, it's actually a pretty rare thing that red gets a four, three attacker for three mana. Um, so, uh, you know, this card's a common, I mean, it might not seem like it at first glance, but, I mean, that's really good. Uh, red, you, like, I don't know if they've ever gotten that before. So, this is a very good aggressive creature, and three toughness means, I mean, it, it attacks past bears, um, and it's great for pump spells. Um, you know, Rush of Adrenaline, Uncaged Fury, uh, all these great pump spells uh, work really well in this. It starts attacking early, uh, and then, I mean, it's not even all-in aggressive. For how good it is when you're attacking, a 2-3 on defense is actually fine. So, uh, and it has the wolf's uh, creature type, so it gets some bonuses there. So this is a surprisingly good uh, creature for red. Um, and, you know, because it's so cheap, uh, I think it's going to be a higher pick than a more powerful Vilden Pack Outcast. Number two, what could very well be the best red common is Thermo Alchemist. One a red, a zero three human with defender. You can tap it to deal one damage to each opponent, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you can untap it. So, this card is amazing in the spells deck. Obviously, you're casting a lot of spells, so you can keep throwing damage at your opponent's face. So it's really good there. Um, a three, an O three defender uh, blocks quite well in the early game. Um, so, yeah, all your opponent's bears, this is going to hold them off, force your opponent to use a pump spell or, you know, a ping extra damage to remove the alchemist while it's pinging for at least one a turn. Uh, it's a lot like Lobber Crew from Return to Ravnica, which was an 0-4 for three mana, um, but this does the same amount of damage. It just has one less toughness, so it's a little easier to kill, but you get it on turn two, so that's much better for your curve. It lets you play another three drop. And uh, the interesting thing is that it's actually the best two drop in any red deck. Uh, so even if you're really aggressive, uh, you wouldn't think to play an O3 defender, but this is going to deal uh, one, um, I would imagine somewhere around like 1.2, 1.3 damage per turn in your average aggressive red deck, so not one that's focused on spells, um, which is not as good as a bear uh, would be on turn two, but a lot of times, like, your opponent just plays a 2-3, and then your bear sits there for the rest of the game, where Alchemist is just going to be dealing damage for the rest of the game. So this can very easily get 5, 6, 7, 8 damage in from one card that you only spent 2 mana on. And honestly, your opponent's probably going to need to spend a removal card on this card at some point. And 3 toughness means they might even have to spend like 5 mana to remove it, and you've already dealt a good amount of damage. So this card's really annoying. I feel like I maybe should actually put this at first place, um, but I went with a different card that I think is a little more obvious uh, for the best common, and that's Galvanic Bombardment. It's one red instant, deals X damage to target creature, where X is two plus the number of cards named Galvanic Bombardment in your graveyard. So it's a shock that only hits creatures at instant speed, and for each one that you've cast that game, in addition, you get an extra damage. So it starts as a shock, goes to a lightning bolt. So if this was just instant deal two damage to a creature, it would be great, would be one of the best commons in the set. Um, the instant speed means you can do this in response to an opponent's trick. There are some werewolves that start with two or less toughness and flip for five or six mana. You can bombardment them in response for a huge blowout. So it's really nice there, it can hit utility creatures and it's a great cheap spell for the Spells Matters deck. And on top of that, it has the bonus that if you get multiples, they start dealing more damage, which is great. Unfortunately, everyone's going to be picking up this card. So it's not like other Collectum cards that, you know, only, like you're the only person at the table who's interested in them, and so you can end up with five or six. You're not going to get more than two or three bombardments. Um, and then even with two or three in your deck, you're probably not going to draw, you know, two or three. So it's very rare that you're actually going to hit something for three or four, 
but that's fine because the card's still great just dealing two damage and now on to green so green is also quite shallow um, I had a little bit of difficulty picking uh, the fourth best green card there's a few cards they're not very exciting um, that are fighting for the fourth slot and I went with the one that I think has some of the most upside uh, which is grapple with the past it's one in a green instant put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard then you may return a creature or land card from your graveyard to your hand so this card is very reminiscent of vessel of nascency um, it's uh, it's good to compare these two cards and that was a great card for the you know, any green delirium deck especially black green um, grapple is very similar it costs one less mana overall uh, but you're going to go one card fewer into your deck, so it's a little bit harder to hit Delirium off of it, and Instant is usually a less exciting um, card type to get in your graveyard than Enchantment. It's usually easier to get Instants, though not always. They're both pretty important card types to try to fit into your deck. Um, so Vessel looks a little bit better uh, to start with, but I feel like Grapple actually might be the better overall card. While Vessel can uh, you know, find more types of cards uh, and goes deeper uh, and will be a better early Delirium enabler, uh, Grapple is a better card for the late game. Because unlike Vessel, rather than just choosing from the top X number of cards, you actually get to choose from your entire graveyard. So in the late game, if your opponent killed one of your bomb creatures, Grapple can just grab that back, where Vessel can only take cards out of the top four. Um, so even if you're not in Delirium, just Grapple is just a much better late game card. You can just get your best creature back in addition to filling up your graveyard. So I think it's, a, it's about on par with Vessel and maybe a little bit better uh, in Delirium decks. Number three is Primal Druid. One in a green. It's an 0-3 human. When it dies, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. So if this just died immediately, it would be a rampant growth. So two mana to accelerate yourself, fix, is quite a good card. Um, but you know this isn't going to be as consistent for ramp purposes. Rampant growth, you're always going to be able to cast a four drop on turn three if you get growth on turn two, where Druid isn't usually going to do that. So it's, uh, it's not quite the same type of card. Um, so in the usual case, you're going to play Druid and it's going to block your opponent's bears for a little while and then somewhere around turn five or six your opponent's going to attack with a three power creature or greater you trade druid off for it you get the land and you stay even on cards uh, so you got a chump block and you got to find a land uh, maybe helped you fix uh, or ramp yourself a little bit and that's decent uh, it's nice in delirium because it lets you get a creature in your graveyard pretty easily and while it's not very good in aggressive decks it's okay in Werewolves because uh, that deck can be very mana intensive, so being able to get an extra land out of your deck is actually pretty nice. I feel like there could be a Werewolf deck that's more of a controlling deck that just wants to set up, give yourself enough time to start transforming your really big Werewolves, and this would be a pretty key card in it. Uh, but what makes this card uh, one of the best green commons is Emerge. Green is one of the Emerge colors, so this gives you a two mana card uh, that you can use to Emerge, and you stay even on cards because it searches out a land for you. So you can play this on turn two or three, and then on turn four or five or six, depending on the emerge card, you can play a really big creature and stay even on cards. So it's going to be a pretty high pick for emerge decks. Number two is Prey Upon. One green, sorcery, target creature you control, fights target creature you don't control. So this is a reprint from Innistrad. There it was one of the better green commons. And I think it should be one of the better green commons here. Uh, there may be pe uh, some people who um, are a little down on this card, considering that the last time we saw it was um, a natural aggression, uh, three mana instant uh, that, that did this effect. Uh, and that card was very disappointing in Battle for Zendikar. Uh, but I think there are a lot of reasons why that card was bad, and this one's actually quite good. Um, now, this card is sorcery, where aggression was instant, but Battle for Zendikar, the green, the creatures were actually very small, so it was hard to actually get a big creature to use a card on. And there were lots of really large toughness creatures. Creatures had really weird powers and toughnesses, and frequently had higher toughness than power. 
So it was really hard to hit key creatures that you wanted to hit. Uh, and then just being more expensive maybe takes your whole turn up to use. Um, so Prey Upon here, the green creatures are a lot bigger, so you're more likely to be able to just kill a creature with no problem. Uh, and because it's only one mana, uh, it just gives you a lot more freedom to use the card effectively. So your opponent taps out, uh, you can play a large creature and play Prey Upon in the same turn. Or you could use a Pump Spell and Prey Upon. Uh, it's just such a better tempo card since it only costs one mana. So it allows you to do multiple things in one turn. You get to kill a creature and add more things to your board. And so a you know, really great tempo card. And sometimes you'll have to go for it. Your opponent will have the instant speed removal. You get wrecked. You're unhappy. But it only costs one mana. And most of the time you're going to be able to kill what you want with this card. And now, the number one green common by far is Ulvenwald Captive. One in a green, one two werewolf horror with defender. You can tap to add a green mana to your mana pool. You can pay five and two green to transform it into Ulvenwald Abomination, a four six Eldrazi werewolf that you can tap to add two colorless mana to your mana pool. So for starters, uh, let's look at the first side of the card. It's a 1-2 two for 2 that taps for a mana. It has Defender, but that doesn't matter too much on a 1-2. So already this card is good. Um, this is uh, a card that's been in a lot of formats. Uh, usually it can attack, but again, that's not a big deal. Um, and yeah, ramping from 2 mana uh, up to 4 mana on turn 3 is a really great thing. Um, so those cards are usually some of the top green commons uh, in any format. And in this format, it's actually uh, you know, possibly particularly good because there are these werewolves that are really expensive. There's emerge creatures. There's a lot of mana sinks in this format. So uh, you know, it's unlikely that you're just going to you know, flood out and not have anything to do with all this mana. Speaking of flooding out and not having anything to do with all this mana, this card transforms for seven mana into a 4-6 that taps for 2 mana. Uh, I mean, that ability to tap for 2 mana, maybe if you're trying to cast an Emrakul, that could be good. Usually, you're just going to treat it as a 4-6 at that point. But a 4-6 creature is very big. Um, I mean, there are some really big creatures in this format, so maybe your opponent has a bigger one. But, uh, I mean, that's a creature that's big enough to end a game by itself. Uh, you know, it's a legitimate threat that your opponent has to deal with. And, you know, one of the negative, um, one of the downsides to playing Mana Elves is that, you know, if you flood out, they lose all their value in the late game. You can jump with them. They don't do much. But this one turns into a 4-6 creature. Um, like, the combination of both effects is just incredible. And it... It taps for one mana, so effectively you can transform it for just six mana. And six mana for a four-six creature is a bit overcosted, but it's, I mean, that's not that bad. Uh, I mean, five mana for a four-six would be quite good. So you're paying one extra mana. Um, like, the fact that you just turn your mana elf into a large creature is just amazing and really breaks this card. So I feel like this card is the best common in the set. Um, so... Uh, the rest of green commons, I think, are a little weak, but this one is really, really amazing. And finally, uh, I'm going to go over just one artifact card. Uh, there's a couple that are playable, um, but there's one that I think is interesting that is you know, worth uh, trying to evaluate, which is Cultist Staff. It's two mana for an artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus two, plus two, and the equip cost is three. So the reason why I find this card so interesting is that there's this other card, Bullshock Morningstar, from Darksteel, that's the same card except the equip cost was just two. And that card was a really, really good common in Darksteel, where there was even uh, a good amount of artifact removal, and the card was still great. So uh, they have not really made an equipment of that caliber, especially at common, uh, since Morningstar. And this card is very, very close to it. Same card, just one more to the equip cost. So, you know, how good is this card? Um, a lot of equipment lately has looked exciting, but played pretty poorly. Uh, cards that equip for three or four mana uh, might have something like it looks exciting, but it's just, it's just too much mana to actually... 
um, you know, use reasonably without you know, putting all of your resources in one basket. So the question is, does cultist staff fall into the former category or the latter? And I think it's really interesting. I feel like the three mana for equip is actually a pretty big deal. I think it's a pretty big difference. I think with two mana equip, it's pretty reasonable to equip it to one creature, attack with that creature, and then move it back to another creature. And you might even be able to play uh, you know, something small in addition. Uh, with two mana equip, you can equip and still play a large creature on your turn. Um, I think once you get to three mana equip, it just limits the other things that you can do in your turn. It makes it more likely that you're gonna have to invest your whole turn on just equipping the staff. And that means that if your opponent has removal, they are able to sort of time lock you every time that you try to equip it. Um, I don't think there's that much removal that really hurts you for it, but I think just the fact that you gotta spend that extra mana to move it around, um, I think it is a big deal. So while this card, uh, if it was just two mana to equip, you know, might be like a B plus card that just goes great in every deck. Uh, I think going to three mana to equip moves it down to about a C, uh, and that's a huge difference. Um, I still think that it's good in heavy creature decks, green white decks with lots of flyers, so blue white. Um, maybe a blue red deck, though. You want to focus on spells usually. Um, so the card still helps you get value for some of your weaker creatures, um, and so can be very good in some matchups, uh, but I do think that that one extra cost um, does limit this card considerably. So that does it for my top four commons of each color for Eldritch Moon. Uh, I'm going to be back going over my top four uncommons for each color, and then the top 15 bombs of the format. So stay tuned for those. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.